Now, we're going to find the number of divisors 4,500 has by using prime factorization. The prime factorization of 4,500 is 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 3. Now, what does it mean to be a divisor of 4,500? A divisor, let's just call it D, of 4,500 will divide 4,500 evenly. So in other words, 4,500 will be divisible by D if D is a divisor of 4,500. Now let's take a look at what D could be. If D is equal to 2 to the power of 3 times an integer k, then it can't be a divisor of 4,500 because if d is a divisor of 4,500, 4,500 has to be divisible by d. And if we have 2 to the power of 3 in uh, d, then we can never completely simplify this fraction. We will still have a 2 left in the denominator, and we'll have no way of getting rid of it. So, if d is a divisor of 4,500, it cannot have more factors of any of the primes in the prime factorization of 4,500 than 4,500 has. So, d cannot have, two, d cannot have more factors of 2 than 4,500 has. That goes for any other prime that is in the prime factorization of 4,500. So the same goes for 3 and 5. Now, what if d is equal to 7n, where n is another integer? Well, in this case, d can also cannot be a divisor of 4,500 because there's no way to get rid of that 7 that will be in the denominator. And we can no longer simplify that, because there's nothing to cancel out the 7. So what did we learn from all this? Well, we learned that d has to be in the form of 2a times 3a, uh, 3b times 5c, where a is equal to 0, 1, or 2, b is equal to 0, 1, or 2, and c is equal to 0, 1, 2, or 3. So now, we're going to use a little bit of combinatorics to find out how many divisors 4,500 has. Any divisor d can either have 0, 1, or 2 twos. So, it can have three different uh, numbers of twos. Each different value of d could have 0, 1, or 2 threes. So we have three different uh, options for how many threes we want. And each different d can have 0, 1, 2, or 3 number uh, three fives. So we have four options for the number of fives in each divisor of 4,500. If we multiply all this together, we will get 36. So 4,500 has 36 divisors. Now, let's try to generalize this a bit more. We said that a can be equal to 0, 1, or 2. So in other words, it can be equal to any integer between 0 and 2. b is equal to 0, 1, or 2, which is also any integer between 0 and 2. c equals 0, 1, 2, or 3, which again can be expressed as any integer between 0 and 3. Now all we have to do is count how many integers there are between 0 and 2. We know there are n plus 1 integers 
from 0 to n. So there must be 2 plus 1 integers from 0 to 2, 2 plus 1 integers from 0 to 2, again, and 3 plus 1 integers from 0 to 3. So that means that we have three different choices for a. Oh, sorry, we'll just write it like this. 2 plus 1 different choices for a. For how many 2's there are going to be? 2 plus 1 choices for b. And 3 plus 1 choices for c. If we add them all up, we get 3 times 3 times 4. And we get our same answer. That means all we have to do to find out how many factors a number has is find its prime factorization, then take all of the exponents in each of the primes and add one to it. So let's go do another example. Let's try 500. The prime factorization of 500 is 2 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 3. We take these two exponents, add 1 to each of them, and then we multiply them, and you'll get our answer. So 500 must have 12 factors.